In this video, I'll show you how I created a trading tracker dashboard using a Waveshare 3.49 inch ESP32 display and the LVGL Pro Editor. This tracker fetches data from a Binance WebSocket to display crypto prices and uses a REST API to retrieve personal data like holdings and open orders. It calculates PL based on this data and also shows a 30 bar, one minute candlestick chart. This board comes with a battery, speaker, microphone, SD card, and more. If you'd like to create a custom project like this, you can reach out to me on Telegram or by email. You can find all the board details on the WaveShare product page. There are multiple variants available, so you can choose the best match for your project. The sample projects are available on the WaveShare wiki page. I use the demo project to create an LVGL template. I've also created a new repository with LVGL templates for various boards. It helps you kickstart your UI projects easily. Uh, WaveShare sent an audio board with dual microphones and an RGB LED, which I think would be great to integrate with Home Assistant. They also included an e-paper display, and I'll be creating something interesting with these devices. Um, if you'd like to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. It really helps me keep creating more projects like this. Go to pro.lvgl.io, choose your platform, and download LVGL Pro. Check out viewer.lvgl.io to see sample projects from basic to advanced. It's the best way to get a solid understanding of LVGL Pro. Also, watching the official videos from LVGL helps you get a better understanding of how LVGL Pro works. Open LVGL Pro and create a new project. It'll take some time to set up and compile the environment for the first time. On the left side of the editor, you'll see a list of all folders and files. It helps keep everything organized. To set the width and height for the WaveShare 3.49 inch display, open project.xml and update the screen width and height. Uh, go to the screens folder and create a new screen.xml. Then add a screen and view tag. This will show a preview of the screen on the right side of the editor. To add a label, Insert a label widget tag inside the view. You can also style the widget, the screen, and all other elements within their corresponding tags using LVGL style properties. Another interesting feature is that you can define color styles and other properties in global.xml and apply them across all screens and widgets. Now let's build the project and test it on the device. In the template folder, copy the project folder to the lib folder. Then open the folder in VS Code and make sure the platform IO extension is installed. In main.cpp, include the UI header and create and load the screen inside the setup function. Build and upload. It's working, now let's build the UI. For this UI, I used a font from Google Fonts. 
in LVGL Pro, copy the font to the font folder, define it in global.xml, and make sure it's working. For the image, copy it to the image folder, define it in XML, and check that it's working. I created the UI the same way, so I'm fast forwarding. To update the label dynamically, add a subject in global.xml and bind the label's text to it. In the components folder, I created a label component so it can be reused across the main screen. This follows LVGL's component-based design, allowing consistent styling and easier maintenance. In the main screen file, I created a canvas, added the custom component, and duplicated it to display additional trading details. Right now, the labels are stacking on top of each other. To fix this, create a style with a flex layout and apply it to the canvas. To update the label component with different data, create an API in the component's XML and link it to the label's text. Then I created a subject for each detail and linked it to the component's API and the label widget. Change the API type to subject, set a default value, and bind the text to the label. I added more subjects for each component created on the main screen. Later in the code, fetch and update these subjects so the changes are reflected in real time. In the main screen, I updated the details with the correct subject names. The final UI looks like this. I added a component for the status bar and used subject and state styles to make the UI more engaging. In another video, I'll show how to implement this. Then I added functions to make everything work. If you liked this video, consider supporting me.